we have a lot of changes ongoing in the German and also in the European transmission network. One of them is uh, an ongoing development that we need high transmission capacities because the renewable energy is concentrated regionally. This asks for new transmission lines on the one hand, so an enhanced system, but in, especially in Germany, we are also building a hybrid system with AC and DC lines. From this, we have some resulting challenges. We need more static, but especially more dynamic reactive power source. And we have a complex system operation due to a lot of new degrees of freedom in operation. And we need more stability controlling and maybe also other stability limits and methods to derive them. Expected solutions for this is that we have new system stabilizing controls and enhanced system operation strategies. This includes the already mentioned methods, the limits, the automation of control as well. Second, uh, second uh, keynote here is the phase out of conventional power plants in Germany, especially due to the phase out of nuclear and also coal fired power plants. As an effect, we will have less synchronous generators in the system operating in the system. On the other hand, renewables uh, generation is often converter based if we think about especially PV and wind and also batteries will of course be converter based. Nevertheless, our actual system is based on the behavior of synchronous generators. So we would like to have a future operation which somehow uh, substitutes the characteristics of the synchronous generators. One of them is the inertia, which is provided mechanically by the synchronous generators. The other is the instantaneous provision of reactive power current during changes in the network and also during short circuits in the network. Especially synchronous generators can provide a high reactive current due to their short time overload capability. And as a solution, actually grid forming controllers are discussed and are supposed to be the future, um, uh, future solution for most of these challenges. Yeah, what is grid forming uh, control? Let's start, as I said, grid forming control somehow tries to mimic the behavior of a synchronous generators. And what does a synchronous generator mean? On the right hand side, we have this very simple model of a synchronous generator in a balanced operation. It consists of an internal voltage and any kind of internal impedance set key internal. And assume that we also have a, um, a grid impedance um, connected to that synchronous generator. A synchronous generator, due to its uh, 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 ma uh, magnetic linkages inside the generator, has, even if changes appear in the network, a constant internal voltage. That means that if there is any ch uh, change in the system, let's assume that we have a sudden reduction of the grid impedance, then it will react with some retard on it. So what does that mean? Looking at a uh, a synchronous generator, this would mean if we have the sudden reduction of the grid in the first phase, the current coming from the, uh, from the uh, synchronous generator will go up. And after a while, according to voltage control, it will slow down again to a new stationary value. And this is what also the, let's say, the grid forming control does. A classical control of converters, like a current-based converter control, will be very fast going to the new stationary point. It seems favorable. However, this uh, brings, um, uh, let's say, very high uh, dynamics in the network since the synchronous generator always tries to, by this retarding of the internal voltage, to level out the changes that have been produced by external influences. That's what, in fact, grid forming converter control tries to mimic. One of them is the so-called direct voltage control DVC, which has been developed at our institute. Nevertheless, it's not just mimicking synchronous generator behavior. Yeah? Because as a synchronous generator, the main parameters, for example, the mechanical inertia, are given by the, uh, just by the design of the synchronous generator. Now we are dealing with control, so we can almost program every kind of behavior and control and its parameterization. And therefore, 
there's ongoing research all over the world and also at my institute on desired grid forming behavior in the long run when we have 100% renewables, but also this behavior must cope with the transition period when we still have, let's say, classical equipment and new equipment. There might be new other stability issues and limits possible because we have a next, grid gen next generation grid then with next generation behavior and we have to investigate this. Actually, there is uh, the need to define network codes for grid form and controls that have not yet been defined. However, there's a time frame to do this until July 2025 uh, because there's an obligation to think about new requirements until then. Yeah, from our lab design, first of all, we have a classical power hardware in the loop design with components of both Lucas Nulle and Opal RT. The Lucas Nulle equipment is a downsized but close to reality equipment, which especially allows us to utilize our own controls on the equipment, like for example, wind turbines. On the other hand, we have the real-time simulator and both systems are coupled by a four quadrant power amplifier, which for this specific type is the first one which has been delivered to a customer by Opal RT. This classical approach already allows us to test the controls on close to reality environment, including all of natural inaccuracies and of latencies of communication. So it can uh, prove better and closer to real realistic that our controls are really working. It also allows on the other hand, for fast prototyping of controls. So we can implement the controls in the real-time simulator as a, as a fast prototype and simulate it on classical equipment in the lab and show that there is um, uh, no disturbing interaction in between. This is in order to govern the transition period to the future next generation system. But that's not all. We have overlaying, of course, a wide area monitoring and supervisory control system which uh, itself communicates with the dynamic security assessment system. This DSA system makes forecast uh, calculations for a short time period as regards the future development of stability issues. It's based, built on today's knowledge about stability issues, but with this we can evaluate system stability methods of today and we can, can also evaluate new methods and define new limits for system stability.